chat. Okay. Yeah, looks like I can go on. Uh, so if you see this image on the left of this guy with camera, right? Now these these would be some numbers. So for example, I mean these are not the exact numbers. For example, this image is being represented by the numbers that I've shown on the top left, the matrix in the top left. Now this is the input image. Okay. And uh, I somehow want to process this image to get the image on the right. Now you see the image on the right is blurred than the left one, right? Now, how is this image blurred? So what is the difference between these two images? How can I get a blurred image from a normal image? Now, if you use Photoshop, there would be, or some filters, you'd use some filters, right? In fact, you can use the zoom filter to, to actually uh, do blurring. Now, how, how does it take capture your photo with the camera, with a computer webcam and turn and blur it? Now, this part of co computation is called, uh, is called image processing. And I'll, I'll give you an introduction to how, how computers do, for example, blurring. They, they do a wide variety of options. So if you see Photoshop, those of you who use Photoshop, there are so many, uh, so many different tools that you can use to process images. Now here, uh, if you see, so let's say that this photo on the left, and by the way, feel free to interrupt me because this might be a little confusing for some of you. Uh, so this is an image on the left. It's being represented by these numbers on top of it. Okay. And I want to get this output image and this output image is blurred basically. And it's represented by the numbers on top of it. So I'll teach you how do we get this blurred image from a normal image. Okay. So now look at this box in the middle, which I've marked as box filter. Now there is something called as a filter in image processing. Okay. Now a filter is also a matrix of numbers that is smaller than the image itself. For example, th th this is three by three matrix and you will learn the more about the mathematics of matrices in, in grade 11 or 12, I think. Um, um, so all, so let's say, this filter is three by three and all the values are one by nine. So I've taken one by nine common in this case, but let's say all the places are one by nine. Okay. So now we have nine numbers that are one by nine. I hope that's clear. Now what we would do is that we would see this image, this number matrix on the left, which is the input image. And I will look at three by three window at a time. For example, you can see this, square that is three by three, right? Now I'm looking at that three by three window. It has what values it has. It has zero, 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 90, 90, 90, nine numbers. And our filter has also nine numbers, which are one by nine, 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 one by nine so on. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to multiply the numbers from this small square on the right with the numbers in small squares on the left. Now what would happen? So zero times one by nine would be zero. Zero times zero, one by nine would be zero. So the first six numbers would be zero, correct? And the next numbers would be 90 by nine, which would be 10. Next number would be 10. Next number would be 10, right? So what I'm going to do is I have now have obtained these nine numbers. Three of them are tens, all others are zeros. Now I'm going to add those three numbers. What do I get? I add those three numbers and I get, uh, uh, I get the number 30 because it's three times 10. So now I will take that number 30 and I will replace it in the place where there is the center square in the, in the right output image. So, so the, the place where I've drawn the red square in the left image, go to the same place on the left image and see its center. You see it's 30, right? So that's how we have got 30. We have multiplied this small matrix, which is called the box filter to each of the elements on the left in the red box. And I've replaced the value of the center number as the sum of those. So this operation is very important. It's called convolution. And this is so what can you repeat? Yeah, sure. So did you understand that box filter has one by nine in all places, all the nine places? Okay. And on the left red square on the bottom three, uh, there, the, there is the value 90, right? So now I'm going to multiply the 
nine values in the red box with the nine values in the box filter so what would i get there i would get zero in the first six and then nine uh, and then 10 in the last three right and now what would i what i would do is i would add these all these numbers that i've gone uh, got after multiplying so after multiplying six of them are zeros and three of them are tens so the total i get is 30 right because it's three times 10 correct yes yeah correct now i have got this number now i want to replace that number in the output image on the right matrix now the question is where i want to replace this 30 so draw this red box exactly in the same place in the right image okay and okay. and choose the center square what is the number over there Thirty. Thirty, exactly. So that's where the thirty has come from. And I do this. Okay. And I would do this for all the patches in the image. So, so I can draw this red box everywhere in this image, right? I can shift it by one, up and down, and left and right. So I would do that. And whatever numbers that I get after multiplying with the same box filter, I would replace the sum in the right in the right image. and this is what happens so what happens is that the value of the pixel at each point is now an average of the pixels in its neighbor neighboring area so that's why it the image blurs so if you see the this animation on the right it shows how this filter is moved and the sum is calculated and replaced in the center is it clear to everyone please let me know if you have questions i mean for me it took a few times to understand this so yeah yes clear clear uh, anybody else should not understand by the way those of you who feel shy i think there is also an anonymous uh, anonymous uh, way to answer uh, to ask questions in the chat so feel free to do that now there is there are whole kind of different operations that you can do for example i can take this image on the left of einstein right i can blur it using the operation that i just showed you and if i subtract these numbers of image of the blurred image from the original image i would get an image like this which is detailed so if you see it captures the details of the image right it captures all the edges and everything now if i take the original image and i add this detailed matrix i will get a new image that is actually sharper than the original image so all these features that have let's say the edges they are more pronounced and that has happened because in the original image i have added those parts of the image that are really prominent so those so the value so let's say the value of the edge bit for the nose was let's say let's say 20 now it has become 35 because i have added some more detail to it now i did not add the detail to all the places i have only added it to some prominent edges and that's why the image has become more sharp and so this is another example of how you can manipulate numbers to get a completely new image that means something other than what was in the original image so so this is what what scientists were working early in 1960s and 70s trying to do this image processing understanding how we can manipulate these uh, matrices of numbers to get something now there are diff- now as scientists progress so they identified okay so we can use manipulate these numbers to get new images uh and then and then uh, there were different concepts that they wanted wanted to understand so they wanted to identify the edges for example now what makes a what really makes an edge an edge is made by uh, for example if the object is changing so let's say if there is a dog and there is grass in the background so there is some kind of edge it's called an object boundary now it's possible that an edge is formed in the same object because of material properties so for example on the right side you see that the dog's forehead and the dog's ear have different colors so that's why an edge is forming a third example would be surface normal discontinuities so there are so the leg of the chair has two surfaces that are adjacent right and because they are at some angle the light that's falling on them it is different for the both for both the faces and that's why some edge is forming okay so now once we have the sense of how edges are formed we can actually try to understand how 
these uh, numbers, matrices of numbers can be manipulated to detect these edges. Okay, now, um, so if you want to try to understand, so let's say we are going from white to black. So if you see this step on left side that I've shown, you can see that the there is something that's constant and then it suddenly drops. So for image pixels, you can understand it as there was white. So there was high value of current in the sensor. So there was value 255 and then suddenly it drop, drops to near zero. So that's where we have detected an edge because things are going from white to black. Similarly, what can happen is that in the second case, it can go from black to white for a short while, for a short step, and then it can again come back to black. So there, that, this would be basically a st strip of white line on black background. Same for the third case, where the amount of white is even like thinner. Okay, so now I talked about this averaging filter, right? Now I'll try to talk about a new filter. Now what this filter does is it's 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 basically two numbers minus one and one. So I again do the same thing as I did earlier, right? So I was moving this three by three filter all across the image as you see in the animation on the right. Right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these two numbers instead of these nine numbers. I would have just two numbers minus one and one. So what would happen is that when I'm replacing an a pixel on the right image, what I would do is that I would multiply minus one with the first pixel and I would multiply one with the next pixel and I would add them. So what, I, what is essentially happening? I'm doing right pixel minus left pixel. Did everybody understand that? Because I'm taking the right pixel, I'm multiplying it by one. I'm taking the left pixel, I'm multiplying it by minus one and I'm adding them. So I'm essentially subtracting the first pixel from the second pixel and I'm replacing that value in the second image, in the output image. Is that clear? Yes, sir, as we are using only two uh, units in the matrix, where we are going to place the sum of the... Yeah, that's a great question. So you can place the sum either on the left one or the right one, it doesn't matter. Like the image would only shift by one pixel in that case. Okay, sir. But just be consistent about it. So at all places you can replace it on the right pixel or all at all places you can pl replace it on the left pixel. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad that you, you guys are understanding it and asking these questions. So, uh, so yeah, so, so when we do that operation, we get this kind of an output image that you see on the right. Now this is essentially taking the difference, right? So it's kind of getting the first derivative of the image. Now I can apply the same operation on this image and then I would get this second image that you see here. Now this is the second derivative of the image. Now I'm, now why am I telling you these random things? Why am I telling you to subtract? I will come to that later, but first of all, you need to understand what's happening here. So I get this difference image and then I again calculate the difference of it to get the second derivative. Now I did this in horizontal direction, right? I can also do it in the vertical direction. In that case, it would be lower pixel minus up, up, upper pixel. So when I do that, I, I get the images on the bottom. Now, what? why is this useful? It's because when we calculate the difference between adjacent pixels, it gives us the sense of how values are changing. So for example, if, if you see on the left side, I've shown this step, right? So if you see the difference between the values at the edge, so the place where the edge is being formed, there we are going from white to black. So if I do right pixel minus left pixel, I would get something like zero minus 255. And because it's a large value, I know that there is something that has changed. So an edge is there. But if let's say there was a straight line, so that would mean right minus left would be zero. So that would mean no change. And that would mean no edge. And that's why this image information is useful. So if I, let's say, calculate the second derivative, as I showed for, for left to right, and I can calculate the second derivative for up to down, I can do it in both ways. Right. And if I take those two images and I add them, so for example, here, then I get this kind of an image. So basically filters are giving us these interesting features from an image. 
and I can use these features to do other operations. Okay, so so basically, we have been able to get the important features of Einstein's face. So these are the important features, right? You can see the nose, you can see the shape of the eyes without knowing the color information by just knowing these differences. So th this is giving some interesting features. So I hope by now I have given you some sense of what numbers mean.